So uh, without further ado, I'm going to introduce the next speakers. Um, long time and great community supporters and organizers of Corbett, Gary and Bev La. Uh, Friends of Vista House is just one of the Corbett area groups they devote their time and energy to. Uh, bringing the old Springdale School back to life is another, which is one that's close to my heart, uh, as both my kids reap the benefits as students of that revitalization. Um, now, uh, a little background about their connection to the Vista House. Uh, Gary Law was a Vista House board member from 1989 to the present, a liaison to uh, the Vista House Restoration Project from 1995 to 2004. He is a, a member of Restore Oregon. And uh, as I was just talking about the Springdale School, he had it placed on the National Register of Historic Places and helped save the building, which is absolutely true. Uh, Gary is also curator for the Crown Point uh, Country Historical Society. His wife, Bev, a uh, Vista House board member from 1984 or 94? 84. 94, okay, sorry, to the present, or till 2000, sorry. Vista House volunteer from 1994 to the present, um, which in, uh, involved her working with flowers, uh, cookie days, and costumes, right? Excellent. Also a uh, volunteer with T uh, Troutdale Historical Society, Leach Gardens, Portland Women's Forum, president for four years, uh, and also a member of Crown Point County or Country Historical Society. Pretty amazing uh, work on your part. Um, ladies and gentlemen, Gary and Bev La. Uh, thank you, Tim. I'll let my wife uh, speak a few words first. Uh, she had to put up with me while I was uh, hidden away writing about the book, which took over a year in the evening. So uh, that is, a, if you've ever written a book, it's not easy. I've never done it before. <laughs> so my wife will say a few words. Uh, hello there. Yes, Gary spent many, many hours writing the book, but also he had a lot of oral interviews with people who had actually worked at Vista House, Mrs. Monroe, who was the one who had the concessionaires, and um, a lot of local people who either were involved in setting up the Friends of Vista House or have volunteered in the Friends of Vista House. And both of us realized that we're getting older and we're probably the last ones with a lot of history from the very beginning when the Friends of Vista House was formed. And I know that he did restoration work back in early 1981, 82, something like that. And I also helped when we had to clean up um, for instance, they had heated the building with the oil furnace and we had to clean that up. We had to clean up the brass. They painted the building, that sort of thing, and we were involved in that. So um, because Vista House was celebrating their 100th anniversary this year on May 5th, it was felt that this committee should have a book written about the history. So that's what Gary's done. Excuse me, my notes disappeared. I, I was know. on a. That's okay. That's okay. Just use this. I'll just wing it, I guess. Yep. Uh, unless it's hid under here. Did you walk away with that little thing you introduced me with? That was it. That was it. <laughs> so, as, as Tim said, uh, he and his wife, I've, I've worked with both of them in Springdale. And uh, we have a garden in back of Springdale School. And in fact, the Historical Society, uh, back here, uh, my, f my friend and colleague, uh, Sandy Carterser, and I worked many hours as, as curators at uh, Springdale School before uh, the county forced us out of the school. It still isn't high enough. Uh, so, uh, that history uh, that Tim mentioned uh, is, is part of our history, living uh, within uh, probably 800 feet of the school. 
to start, uh, I guess that wasn't my notes either. Yeah, okay. So uh, saving the jewel of uh, Crown Point is the title uh, of the book. And uh, I was going to mention uh, about um, a Steve, uh, I mean, uh, Tim and uh, the work with uh, saving buildings uh, for, uh, well, Sharon Nesbitt and I went to different schools together. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, unfortunately, uh, some of her schools are currently being torn down. And uh, us in Corbett, we don't have many big buildings. Uh, Vista House being one of the more prominent ones and some other historic homes which are, are on the National Register. But uh, that uh, effort of putting things on the historic register is, uh, as Sharon uh, mentioned, a big thing. Uh, so uh, Springdale School uh, happened to be uh, a building that um, was going to be torn down. And we went through the politics. I won't explain it all. It's not in the book. It's, the book is all about Vista House. But just for my background, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, really uh, interested in being a builder and a and a Finnish carpenter and a cabinet maker uh, and my third job in my life. <laughs> As we all have different careers, uh, I settled back in Corbett uh, where I grew up uh, in 1982. I came back and, and started helping Vista House uh, do a little um, uh, adjustments in their, their restoration effort. So um, uh, let's look at the we're going a little too fast. Uh, the second one, uh, I wanted to show about restoration. Restoration is continual. Uh, when you look at a, a stone building, this is a brick building, but when you look at a stone building, uh, it needs uh, cleaning now and then. There's a lot of stone buildings, uh, and the city of Portland people are the ones that built Vista House, and they had stone uh, restrooms. If you remember the old zoo in Washington Park, it had many stone buildings. I was just there and saw where the, uh, the bear pit was, uh, but there is a relic of a restroom there. They call it the something uh, on the Washington Park thing, but these old stone buildings were uh, great buildings and architects loved them. And uh, so when Vista House was finished, and I need that pointer, that uh, Chuck had or something. Uh, thank you, Chuck, because uh, I want to point some things out in the pictures that uh, you can, you point to right here, you can see uh, the contrast between the two photos. Uh, in a period of just 12 years, uh, it's gotten sooty. Uh, pollution has made it, yeah. Uh, the, pollution, the pollution has dirtied the building up. And so being on the board, uh, well, it's hard to get public officials and people that have jobs that are very busy in the gorge to actually keep their buildings up. <laughs> and uh, so uh, after all the work we did for, um, as Tim mentioned, I, I worked on getting it restored from 1995 to when it was done in 2004, unofficially. The, the, the ceremony wasn't until 2005, May, that uh, it actually opened and that's what the ceremony here in this photo is. That's, that's the Rosarian, the Rosarians up there uh, who always came. Uh, and so in the meantime, we have a, now a dirty building again. So we need to constantly remind uh, people who uh, own the building that, uh, hey, let's, uh, let's look, make it look nice for the public. You know, you know, your house gets that way too. You know, you, you go to it every day and you don't notice that it's getting... <laughs> Uh, dingy or whatever, uh, but I, I noticed that right away when I saw saw these two photos. Uh, hey, that shows up better than on my screen. So uh, 
Over here uh, on the east end is Crown Point uh, on Thor's Point and uh, way over almost a mile away across the canyon and that canyon developed during the uh, Ice Age floods 15,000 years ago when all that water came down and it washed out this and this continues to slide. I noticed they just repaired uh, the highway near Larch Mountain Road. They, they smoothed it over so now you can drive from Larch Mountain Road here without going boom, boom. So uh, uh, on the west end, there were three, business, uh, three uh, businesses, Chanticleer Inn, opened before uh, 1914, I think, and then uh, some other uh, people had businesses there, uh, a hot dog stand, and a local artist, which the Crown Point Country Historical Society has many of his photos. And he would take your, uh, charge you $25 in 19, uh, 1911 to uh, stand there in the gorge and have the, you, your portrait painted with the gorge in the background. So there were all kinds of businesses, those three, and then about halfway over on the canyon where Neerham Road is, right? Uh, that is the highest point on the historic Columbia Highway through the Cascade Mountains, uh, probably around eight, nine hundred feet high. And then you go down the hill from there to Vista House. So uh, at Vista House, there were uh, several businesses. In fact, there was one before uh, the Vista House was built, and that was again Mrs. Henderson, who uh, got upset with the Morgans who owned the Chanticleer Inn and decided that she would go elsewhere and sell her fried chicken, who people loved. And that's partly why the historic Columbia River Highway was built. She uh, petitioned um, Sam Hill and the city of Portland people to build a better road to her chicken place. <laughs> so uh, she... Uh, uh, built a, the chalet, which was above, and, and I'm, I'm really grateful to Steve. Uh, he's not here now, but thanks, Steve, <laughs> uh, for all these pictures that he brought. And my, my book isn't about pictures. It's about the story behind the pictures and the people that made things happen. So I have a 60-page book, and uh, that's what it's about. Uh, I won't tell you uh, about the ghost of Vista House, nor will I tell you about um, my notes, I lost my notes, uh, about some other things that happened at Vista House. Uh, you can read about it in the book. Uh, but there are a lot of interesting stories uh, over the over 100 years of uh, events uh, in the Vista, at the Vista House. So, uh, interesting thing, uh, Mr. Dimmitt was the first concessionaire at Vista House when it opened in 1918. So, he was there, um, and Mr. Holman and the people at the Multnomah County who owned it uh, were asking them to get, give a little money. So, they finally uh, said, hey, you got to give at least $50 a month for having your concessions at Vista House. So. Uh, what happened was the county didn't have any plans for uh, maintaining the building. Uh, they just built it, and it's a wonderful thing, and they thought, oh, that's good. Uh, it'll just take care of itself, I guess, uh, because they didn't listen to Edgar Lazarus, who was a very sharp uh, architect, and he had even built and had provisions for a caretaker to live in the basement of Vista House. We often have visitors come and ask, was this a house for somebody? And we have to say no, because nobody actually ever lived in it, although there was plans for that. There was a police uh, force or a policeman that would come by and stay there a little bit. But he, I don't know if he stayed overnight. But there was the, the, the problems with vandalism when it opened, of course. <laughs> and, and we had problems with vandalism up through uh, the restoration. But uh, as I'll explain, that, that all changed. We don't have problem with vandalism much, although there's still rowdy teenagers. I was a teenager in Corbett, but I don't remember defacing Vista House. <laughs> but I did uh, leave a little rubber on the pavement. <laughs> 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 uh, 
So uh, Mr. Dimmon, anyway, he got shoved out because uh, he wasn't really helping much with the building. And we have a picture of him in the book. Uh, so he uh, built another building right next to Vista House on the west side where there's a green place where the sewage comes out. I mean, the, the drain field comes out. <laughs> so uh, anyway, there was a log uh, gift shop there, and he, he sold his, his cards there in competition with Vista House. So there was always competition by other businesses. So Vista House wasn't always first place. It was only first place in what? The view. Uh, that was that, and, and, and people really loved Vista House. Uh, so Vista House had that going for it. Uh, we'll look at the next one. Uh, just uh, back on the table, if you want to look at this further, uh, Lazarus designed the building uh, very interestingly. Uh, it's three stories levels, three levels we call it. The bottom level was uh, finished uh, before 1917 because in the fall a lady came in the, the bottom doors. There's doors out here on the highway. The highway goes around the building as you know. And so you could uh, go in the bottom entrance and she went in the bottom entrance and somebody was there and she says, oh, this is like walking into a fairyland because even before the top was put on they had marble in the basement and they had terrazzo floors and it was just wonderful. Uh, so uh, they built things really fast back in those days because they didn't have the, all the bureaucratic red tape to go through. So the top was then finished and dedicated in uh, May 5th, 1918. Uh, 30, 55 feet tall. Uh, and it's an octagonal building, but that first level, if you ever noticed, uh, maybe you didn't, that the walls on the outside, which is, what, 60, uh, 64 feet in diameter, is actually a circle, not an octagon. So that's a kind of interesting thing. And having worked and built things on the Vista House, uh, yeah, you had to make things uh, lay in a circle when you laid them out. So the tunnel runs 55 feet to the north, uh, and uh, that tunnel uh, and other things uh, presented lots of problems over the years, which we'll look at. And there's Edra Lazarus, Lazarus and uh, the dedication in uh, 1918. Uh, and you might notice the Royal Rosarians uh, up here in white. And they always came to the uh, anniversary uh, celebrations uh, uh, that we held at this house over the years. A lot of people. Uh, and the flag, we'll, we'll talk about the flag, which is out of the picture, but it's, maybe they haven't raised it yet. <laughs> That's why, that could be. Uh, so, uh, before uh, this group of people from Corbett and some other helpers, uh, and Roger Maskin as the, the kind of the big burly man on the right, it doesn't seem that big to me anymore. But he's older like I am, I guess. But uh, anyway, uh, he told me that he says, hey, this thing won't get off the ground and we, unless we get everybody to help in East County and in Portland with Vista House, which eventually was the deal. We got everybody to help. Uh, so this was in 1982. And, uh, but a lot had to happen before this group could form. And what happened was uh, State Parks uh, was just about ready to close it up and demolish it. And they asked and did a lot of studies. Uh, there's a forestry center in, in, in uh, Springdale, which we had a lot of meetings at. I, didn't, I wasn't involved at that point, but uh, the, the census was, hey, get those concessionaires out of the building, clean it up, use the rotunda, make it presentable, clean up the windows, get the trinkets off the floor that block the view, uh, and just clean it up and see what happens. But the parks, uh, this is before the lottery, and so the parks didn't have very much money. So they uh, needed help. They needed uh, other agencies, uh, the U.S. Forest Service, uh, 
came and helped. They were good at interpretation. As if you've gone to Multnomah Falls, they have interpretation displays. We didn't have very many good interpretation. How could you have interpretation displays when you had all these trinkets and tables around in the rotunda floor? There wasn't the room in, in the, or, or any plans to interpret uh, the Vista House to visitors. Uh, but soon, when uh, people started coming, uh, they stopped looking for plastic key trains, key chains, and other things and started asking questions about the building and its history and about the gorge and where to go and what to see. Uh, and what are those people up on the top's names for, uh, like McLaughlin? Uh, why, did, why are their names up there? So this started a whole new thing, uh, and a few volunteers uh, came forward, and the Vista House Project, which was an arm of NEMCA, the Northeast Multnomah Community Association in Corbett, uh, got the nonprofit status for this group of people. And they started uh, making plans to have uh, docents, uh, people do the interpretation, uh, to then also roll up their sleeves and clean that city basement up from the, the, the problems there. So in that basement, some of the early um, restoration projects were uh, the uh, tunnel that goes out to the east uh, had a furnace in it, and the heating uh, was a problem because uh, Lazarus had really good ideas about light, ventilation, and heat, uh, and uh, services for the tourists to keep them safe. But uh, due to neglect and uh, no uh, management oversight by anybody that had time to do it, uh, changes were made all the time that uh, kind of uh, circumvented Edgar Lazarus's purpose for the place. So this grill uh, right here is a duplicate of the grill that was on the outside of that uh, entrance tunnel, uh, right? I, I go back to the previous picture, uh, right out uh, here. That, that grill, that grill uh, and, the, and the steel doors um, would uh, keep uh, it safe. But those grills and things were torn down and stuff. So we, we uh, actually had those duplicated in this picture here. And the other thing, uh, this picture on the right, this is actually uh, a picture of the Vista House in its first steps of uh, restoration. They started cleaning it. And all these um, Band-Aid uh, fixes, uh, or incorrect fixes, we can show quite a few on this. The first one is right here under the power washer. You notice a very narrow step, which used to trip people up. Uh, that was a layer of concrete over the skylights, because the skylights leaked, and the simple uh, solution for ODOT, who built bridges, was to put tar on it and put concrete over the tar. And that presented a problem because, and, and then as I'm telling you, one secret that's in the book is that tar actually dripped down on us uh, in the basement. <laughs> so uh, the other uh, thing you might notice uh, in the front entrance are the uh, storefront aluminum windows. Uh, those were put in in the 67s. Uh, not necessarily because the other ones, the, the opalized glass wore out, but because uh, people would break that fragile opalized glass and, and uh, break into the building and steal those concessionaires' uh, stuff. So that was the main reason the, the windows were put in. Okay. Uh, on the left side is that oil tank and the furnace uh, was further down the tunnel uh, because you needed a place, if you have an oil furnace, you need to vent the, the, the pipe, right? The, the pipe was vented up through the, the stairway that went down to the highway. And I could show you where the, the, the pipe went up. But uh, you can see the ceiling there is kind of black. And so was the floor because of the soot from that furnace. Uh, on the right, you can see the um, copper roof. And this, 
This was in 1998, 10 years after the formation of the Friends of Vista House. See, the Vista House Project uh, Committee uh, had to get uh, nonprofit status for themselves, and so the Friends of Vista House was officially uh, formed and uh, became a, what do you call it, a corporation? Yeah, a, a, and then became a co-op and eventually an a association with state parks, a, a mutual, I call it MOU uh, thing. So that didn't happen until 1988. So in 1998, uh, Vista House had its uh, 80th birthday and also the 10th anniversary of the existence of the Friends of Vista House. Big deal, it was in the summer. Uh, they acted like it was the 80th birthday, but that was May. And anyway, we still got the Rosarians out uh, and others uh, and had a great day. It was a good, and in July, we don't have any rain. Uh, so uh, the funding, uh, my wife was on the fundraising committee, and we went a lot, a lot of places and set up our booths and showed the plight of Vista House. And so uh, we were talking about that this morning before that, and... Uh, Bev said, oh, no, the windows weren't done until the restoration started. No, I'll show you some other pictures. Those windows were started to be repaired in 1998 before we had the money to do the whole project. Do you, really, do you always start a project without having all the money to finish it? Well, sometimes you have to, and that's like the Crown Point Country Historical Society. They don't have all the money to finish their building, do you? No, she's shaking her head, no. But you gotta get it started so people can see the potential of what you're going to get when you restore things. Because restoration and um, recycling uh, things that were from the past takes uh, special uh, people and efforts uh, as uh, you that, and you're all here because you're interested in restoration of, of old buildings. And it's a shame to see a building tore down or uh, not, or there's materials not reused. So, uh, these windows were actually uh, completed by, I went out back, uh, the rust. Now the rust uh, on those windows was caused by, um, I didn't sh point out that picture, but those windows, sometimes you protect windows by putting Lex on or like a storm window on the outside. And so that was an, uh, a bad fix. Uh, somebody in the, that owned the building, <laughs> And I was real politically uh, polite to the people that owned the building. I never ju made judgmental statements in the book. Uh, and, and you don't want to do that, right, Sharon? You don't, you don't make judgmental statements and make friends with people. So you just uh, kind of read between the lines and say, oh, why wasn't that done? And you can kind of make your own conclusion. So, so why, why did they do this stupid thing? They see all the rust, all the rust there? This is the the frame and there's plastic over it because it's the restoration. And this is the sash, you know, the part that swings against the, the frame. And it is also very rusty. Now we were very lucky to get these men from New York State that were the only people in the U.S. that could go out on a job site and repair uh, metal sash windows. And they welded and repaired and added to and took out the rusty parts and added in the, I have a picture of them actually welding in the Vista House. So uh, the picture on the right, uh, we'll show that a little later from the outside, but it set that way for many years, or well, for th what, from 98 to uh, 2001 when the restoration started. In the meantime, my wife and other people and uh, uh, a place called, uh, what's it, it's called, the State Parks, uh, rest, no, the, the people that, uh, Sharon Leite, and those were uh, a part, the fundraising arm of State Parks, anyway. State Parks hmm? Trust. State Parks Trust. Yeah, there were three, three agencies that raised money. State Parks Trust, uh, OPRD, Oregon Parks and Recreation, and the Friends of Vista House. We had three people, three agencies, and each of us had a goal. I think a Vista House goal was about 250000 So we raised 250000 uh, from drives. We, we did encourage other gifts and the writing of grants. So we're not counting that in, in our 250000 
So uh, there's the windows finished. We yet have uh, to put the uh, sandstone, sandstone exterior stones back, and the exterior is sandstone over a concrete uh, and rebar building. Hmm? Yeah, and they had to paint the, the sash yet. There was still uh, white. So interestingly enough, uh, my friend Laurel Slater, who, who owned the Bridalville Bed and Breakfast for many years and was a Reed College uh, person who uh, did their, uh, what do you call it, uh, newsletters, their, all their uh, work in that area. Uh, said of the building, uh, the, the people are going to have to live with coming into this house and seeing the bare bones. They took all of the, uh, what I would call the casings, which were five inch inch marble around the window, took them off. They sat that way for three years. Maybe you remember going into this house during that period and seeing how ugly it was inside because it sat that way for that. Now the, the scaffolding got removed once they got the pieces down uh, but you can see the lady sitting down here, uh, and she's there as kind of a guard when the tourists come in and uh, want to look around. She says, oh, you can only go around the, the outside circle inside the building because the, the interior is being worked on. Uh, so that was set that way for uh, many years. In fact, uh, in 2000, uh, we'll mention this, dear. Uh, <laughs> well, first we'll mention uh, a romance that happened between those two men. Remember the two men from uh, C. Kircher, um, the C. Kircher company that did the windows? Well, one of the C. Kircher men got real sweet on one of the uh, gals who was the daughter of one of our longtime volunteers from back in the 80s. Uh, they struck a, a, a romance between Oregon and New York, and uh, they ended up getting married. Uh, so romance often happens at Vista House, I can tell you many stories. <laughs> and the uh, last uh, people to have a wedding, uh, which was a fundraiser method, can't get do weddings inside of Vista House, was this lady and me. Uh, we were married in the Vista House in September 30th, uh, 2000. So uh, she served on the board and I served on the board and we were both divorcees, so it just worked out really well. And I say, love begins at Vista House. And uh, one of the titles I considered for the book was Love the Journey, Vista House from 1918 to 19, or 2018. But uh, my friend Ken, who uh, I lost my notes, I would have introduced Ken Mansky. Ken Mansky uh, designed the cover and the back page and wrote some of the introduction and stuff. And he, is our president of the Friends of the Vista House and also the uh, owner of uh, Northwest Art Mall. And you can buy his posters and uh, his artwork, which he produces. And Ken has uh, written many books uh, and travel guides for Vista House, which we give the tourists or, or they buy. Now our book, our book, uh, as I also remember my notes at the start, was a uh, effort by the board to give something away to the visitors that came at our big celebration on May 5th. So, uh, you know, people come, uh, dignitaries, uh, people that had gave money, you want to give them something, right? So we, we worked on this book and decided that, oh, hey, Gary, you've been here the longest, you better write it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, but Ken was a great help, and we had other people, as I mentioned, Laurel, who had experience in writing it and my wife and others. So we did, it was a team effort, and in the book, there's a big list of acknowledgements. Yeah. So on the outside, uh, the restoration was going strong, and uh, here a man is what you call retucking and remortaring all of the stones. You grind out every joint, and those joints were incorrectly uh, sealed with what I would call uh, caulking. And you don't put caulking on a, 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 a stone building because stone breathes. You may hear about the people, the boys lost in Thailand 
uh, in that stone, uh, limestone caves, uh, the, there's air moving right through the stone. And that's what it does on a stone building. The air moves through it, keeps it dry. When, it, when the sun comes out, it dries out. But if you put caulking on the joints, it doesn't happen. So that was destroying the building. So we had to grind out all of that caulking and the bad, the bad mortar. Uh, and also that top deck that was a tripper uh, that covered the skylights, that was all jackhammered out. So when we were up there, you had to wear a hard hat or earplugs to, because it was uh, like a demo zone, like a war zone. Uh, here was a skylight uh, covered up that they uncovered. And under here, he's reopening up the air vents that were under the windows, which were concreted over so the building didn't breathe that way. Uh, I'm standing out in front of the building, that's the front entrance, and it set that way for quite a while while they were, well, actually just uh, a half a year, from August 1st through December. They did a lot. This, this top up, up there uh, has a membrane on it that uh, keeps the water out. And on the back table, I should have brought that up but it is a piece of the old clay tile that was on the roof originally, and that was all taken off. A new membrane was put on, and also what was taken off was the copper roof. Uh, and so they're getting ready to uh, put a new uh, clay tile roof, which comes from Ohio, the, the tiles do. A uh, green, green is a favorite color of uh, Vista House, and all the signs that go up and down the gorge are, are green, uh, which blends with nature. So there's the new, the new roof tiles put up on the building. And you might notice that uh, those, those windows are still boarded up. Uh, look ahead here. Uh, it progresses pretty well. Uh, this is still the fall of 2000. Any late, you know, anytime you start a project, this project was supposed to start uh, in the summer summer starts what in june 20th or something uh it didn't start till august like 10th or something because uh you know you got to get this paper signed by somebody and that one signed by somebody and you know uh, permits and all that stuff so they had to really rush so they're getting ready to pour the concrete uh on that and they have put a, a rubberized sealant that orange stuff so that's going to keep all the water out uh and it really did uh, although a lot of times that my friend Ken said, well, they did this, but it didn't work. But <laughs> this worked pretty good, except you have to re keep re the uh, uh, skylights, which is a maintenance project. And our new um, State Parks manager is really a good guy. He's doing a good job of doing maintenance. But that fire, which is in the book, uh, kind of slowed him down. <laughs> uh, hmm? Oh, there's eight, 18 skylights, but if you divide that by eight, because it's an octagon, that should be 16, right? So, interesting enough, in one of the eight sides has uh, four skylights. They're all smaller, but, uh, excuse me. Uh, so, we're get, getting ready to, uh, allergies, getting ready to pour the concrete. So what happened was they couldn't finish the exterior, so they had to ask, uh, hey, we need to move inside and start demoing all the old uh, plaster that was all rotted and uh, falling apart. And you can see the, the skylight. So our friends group had lots of fixtures, which uh, my business built, many of them. And we had to move all those out in a, a matter of a week. And uh, also a safe which those, peop those convicts, or whatever they are from Edgefield, came over and, and helped us move out the safe. Couldn't figure that one out, but <laughs> it got out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then in the building, uh, a lot of uh, the mechanical systems had to be redone. All the pipes, uh, plumbing was replaced with copper. You can see them in this picture. Uh, these are some of the pictures that aren't in the book. Uh, there's kind of a chase way if you go down the main hall in the lower level 
uh, between the hall and the bathrooms. And so that was, they discovered some neat things, you know. Hey, those guys had some smarts. They made a chaseway for the plumbing and stuff. So now I'm uh, talking to this uh, worker and I'm not sure remember what I was talking about. Maybe it was about how we're going to move all those fixtures out of the building. Well, you can see that the pipes were, of course, galvanized. Uh, and you can see all the, the plaster falling away. Uh, so we're just about to the end here, if you're getting. <laughs> uh, the 100th anniversary of the Columbia River Highway was in 2016. Um, I already showed you a picture of the dedication picture there at the start. But here's the Rosarians again. And my wife really loves this lady standing next to him. Uh, she is part of a program that we have at Vista House, which uh, several of the uh, ladies and others started to uh, be part of the interpretive program, costumes. We dress up in 1918 costumes and greet the, greet the visitors. So we had a group of those people that always come out to greet the, the visitors and be present at events. Whoops. Uh, the last photo shows that flag again at the start. Uh, this flag uh, was interesting enough, uh, after the dedication in 1918, it was used in the 1916 dedication where Wilson, uh, President Wilson pushed a button and the telegraph came out and the flag was unfurled on the side of a truck because Vista House wasn't built. And then later, two years later, that flag was used uh, on a pole uh, at Vista House. So that flag got tucked away and I think it was the Auto Club of Portland or some auto club, I got it in a book, uh, donated that flag to uh, state parks and one of the state parks ranger after the uh, Vista House formed uh, brought it up and said, hey, you guys need to have that flag. And so we got the flag. It is 12, uh, 6 by 12 in size. It's big. Too big to fly on a pole and too old to be hung out there and be uh, damaged. So it's going to go back in the box uh, for another 100 years, maybe, <laughs> we hope. Uh, and that's a good, a, a good point for engaging talks with tourists. And that's the purpose of the, the volunteers, that I'm a volunteer, is to engage the visitors uh, with. And it's always a good bridge to conversations about this house and its history. Uh, uh, so do we have any announcements or questions? Hmm? Yeah. Do you have any questions uh, concerning this? Uh, as I said, the book will answer some of the, the questions about the unique stories. Uh, Edgar, whoops, I won't let the bag out here. Uh, there's a ghost called Edgar in the Vista House. <laughs> you know that. A lot, a lot. Yeah. That doesn't, doesn't bother us any. That bothers me, first of all, it's misrepresentation. So what happened is the budget for when the building was built was $17,000, and that was in 1916. Then they kept making changes. They added marble, you know, limestone, everything. And so pretty soon it cost $100,000. And so that's why everyone calls it the $100 million. Yeah, and it was built, its specific purpose was built as a comfort station. And that sounds a little nicer to say than it was built as bathrooms. And it was also built as a memorial to pioneers. And there are pioneer names up there. Okay, thank you. Okay, I hope that uh, intrigues you to be interested in the book. Uh, it's $10 or nine ninety-five. It's on the back table. It's available in the min minimums uh, gift shop at the Corbett Market, uh, at uh, the, Red Barn. the Red Barn in, in Troutdale, and uh, of course at Vista House. So thank you.